We buy it from the supermarket and makes it into our meals. But have you ever wondered how the pepper gets from farm to table? Let me introduce you to Bob Redding. He'll be our tour guide today as we journey through the story of the pepper. You can call Bob the godfather of produce. He's been in the business for over 50 years. Even from the car, he could tell you if the fruits and vegetables in the fields were good quality. There's, that's field corn, that's not fresh corn. Look at that acreage. That's a great thing for us because he also happens to know the best fruit stands in town. And let's be honest, we took this assignment to get some fresh, juicy drip down your arm when you bite in, kind of peaches. Bob knew exactly where to stop. Miss, do you have any soft, ripe peaches? Little quarter baskets? I say you have nectarines. And I'm taking them down to George Cassidy's farm. Bob pointed out these goats and sheep on our drive to Cassidy farm, but it was his mention of cinnamon donuts that caught our attention to do one last detour. Naturally, we stopped at farmer's market number two. I eat them faster than she can put them out, so. All right, back to the pepper. It all starts in the greenhouse where the pepper seeds grow from February until April. The greenhouse is full of peppers and you overhead water them with a little sprinkler. From the greenhouse, the peppers get planted until they're ready to be picked in July. It would look like that and you would plant it about like that and it just grows, grows, grows. Cassidy Farm has been in the family since 1895. It was your great, great grandfather's? Yeah, it was only 70 acres. Remember where we showed the squash field? Yeah. There was uh, 70 acres there, that was the original farm. They know I'm the farmer. See, I'm the farmer, I'm their friend. Yes, those are bees, not photographed me in the car yelling at the fellow passenger to close the window. We digress. All right, this is the big reveal in the Pepper story. Do you want to say that? It's not me. <laughs> it should be a commercial that we have service out here. Oh, yeah. That's my phone. That's Bob's oh, phone. Oh, this is your phone, Bob? Yeah. I muted. I just muted. Can you hear me now? <laughs> Did you know the green pepper and the red pepper are the same thing? Like eating a green pepper is like eating a green tomato. So once it's got all its sugars and stuff like that, it's when it's, it's red or starts to have color, it's mature. So technically you're eating an immature pepper by eating it green. It'll be sweeter. It might have more, I don't know, vitamins and stuff because it's totally, it's mature now. But this will cost me more. That will cost you twice as much. The red pepper costs more because it takes about two weeks longer in the field to get them from green to red. George says you'll lose about half of them in that time to external factors like the weather. See, this is from the sun. It's like you and I being exposed to the sun. It just burns. It got sunburned. Feel how warm that is. Oh, yeah. Wow. So it'll get hot and it'll burn it. Look at that one. Yep. That one just shriveled up. That one got dehydrated. That's a dehydrated, that's a dehydrated one. <laughs> you don't pick that. No, that's the plant if that I got broke when they picked them. If I stand here any longer, I'm going to look like that. That's right. <laughs> so. It is hot out here. Yeah. yeah, it's rotten. See, that's what happens, and if you look, if you really look super close, see there's white, see the white things on there? Yeah. That's all spores. So when it rains, all those spores will spread to the other ones and rot all the other peppers in the field. So you have to be careful. See where the plants are dying? It's more, see over there? That's where the spores got on the plant and killed the plant. George says you also won't find these in-between ones in a supermarket because stores only want pure green or red. It's a visual market. It's usually restaurants that will buy them. These are actually cheaper because they're in between. Because they're an in-between color, nobody really wants them. So these machines are here to sort the peppers after they've been picked. It's dividing them out by size among other things. If you're at a chain store, they weigh it by the pounds, or they're going to They want, want a big one. one. For a little one, they're not going to buy a little one because you have to buy too many. Right. So the peppers are then put into a box, loaded onto a truck, and off they go to the next stop. Our peppers have been planted, grown, and picked. Now it's time for them to head from Cassidy Farm to Dandrea Produce for distribution. The thing is, it's very difficult to take time 
planning with retailers, uh, laying out seasonal programs and pricing and knowing market trends. It's very hard for farmers to do that, so that's where we come in. The first step is the inspection process. He'll count the peppers, he'll look at the surface, if there's any imperfections, he'll let us know, and um, he'll then determine by percentages what the defects are. So then we can put together thorough QC reports with pictures, um, and that way we can kind of give our growers an idea of what everything's looking like. We know if we're hitting our customer specs at the retail level, and we can control quality that way. The peppers then go into the cooler, then eventually back onto the truck to take them to the supermarket. Like many of the businesses out here, this place has been in the family since 1917. Peter D'Andrea is fourth generation. Well, it was a small farm, uh, just around 200 acres, right down the street. It's probably about 10, 15 minutes from here um, in Vineland, and it was in it was my great grandfather. And, uh, you know, so it was just a small operation. We only did a couple items. D'Andrea says farming requires generations of knowledge, and it's pretty expensive from the machinery to the land. If you look at the average age of the farmer in America now, it's over 50 years old. And so a guy who's in his 60s now, whose children don't want to get into the family business, for him to be able to sell his farm, uh, you know, it's not necessarily uh, that bad of a, of a prospect. Well, how do you keep it going? How do we keep the you know, farm it's, to table concept going? Sure, from our perspective, it's making the job of farming as easy as possible in terms of what we're able to do to help in the financing and the operational aspects. A lot of these families do want to stay in it, and for us, the importance is paramount to try to help support the sustainable efforts to keep local farms operating um, the way they have been for decades. To his farming, you have to adapt. And you can't ever stand still. You can't say, oh, I'm happy with peppers, or I'm happy with one drip line, I had to go to two. The good news is eating healthy is a growing trend which is helping the industry. I mean, it's definitely going to take, uh, you know, certainly an effort from the whole community here. With farmers like George, inspectors like Bob, and a desire to help with logistics like Peter. So this pepper can get to the supermarket, onto the shelf, from the farm to your table.